Hey guys, uh, today we are going to be looking at some basic first aid and how to identify different types of wounds and how to treat them. So before we get started, any guesses on what the largest organ in the human body is? Anyone say liver, skin, intestines? Any guesses? It's actually the skin. So most of our first aid treatment is going to be looking at different injuries that involve the skin. So before we get started into that too much, we kind of have to have a basic idea of what the skin is and what it does. So skin is divided into three different types or three different layers. The first layer is the epidermis, so that's that top layer. Second layer is the dermis, so that's where all of your little arteries, all your little capillaries are. And the third, la third layer is your subcutaneous tissue. So that's that fatty tissue and then the muscles underneath there. So you'll notice you have nerves that run up through the skin with the um, nerve sensory being in the top two layers of the skin. So that's important because as we look at different types of injuries to these different layers, we expect to see different things. So the first ones we're going to look at are abrasions, scrapes, and cuts. So when we're talking about abrasions, scrapes, and cuts, we're mostly talking about injuries to this first layer of skin, the epidermis, and a little bit into the second layer, the dermis. So abrasions and scrapes are things that rub this top layer of skin off, exposing the uh, more sensitive layer, lower layers of the epidermis. So notice there's no blood, no capillaries in the topmost layer. So when you have an abrasion or a scrape and it only takes the first layer off, you're not going to have much for bleeding. If it's a little bit more of uh, a serious abrasion or scrape, you go up into the second layer and you're going to have some bleeding because you see all those little, little tiny little blood vessels are there. So with abrasions and scrapes, it's mostly just the first or second layer. With cuts, they go into the first or second layer or the third layer, but we're only going to be talking about relatively minor cuts, so cuts that go into these first top two layers. The treatment for all of these are the same. You want to control any sort of bleeding. You want to make sure that you're preventing any further injury to the skin and the tissue, and you want to make sure that you're, um, you're decreasing your risk of infection. So there's a couple ways we go about that. So the first thing you want to do when you have an abrasion or a scrape or a cut is to make sure you wash your hands very well before you tend to anybody else's wound, just to make sure you're not introducing any new bacteria. Once you've done that, you want to expose the area around the wound so you can clean it. So running water over it, cleaning the skin around it, any, if there's any rocks or debris, making sure you wash that out. Um, and then once that is done, making sure you dry your area, you can always apply a small amount of antibiotic cream to the open skin and then applying a clean dressing over top to make sure that if you are having any further bleeding, it gets absorbed um, and prevent any dirt or bacteria from getting into the wound while your body is healing. So like abrasion cuts and scrapes, burns will also affect different layers of the skin. So we grade them by first degree, second degree, or third degree. So it's a really easy way to remember what kind of burn is what. So first degree will only affect the first layer of skin, the second degree burn will affect the first two layers of skin, and the third degree will extend all the way down into that third layer of skin. So the first degree is relatively minor. Um, you'll notice redness, heat to the injured site, maybe a little bit of swelling. It'll be sore, but the pain will be manageable. Once it extends down into that second layer of skin, the second degree burn, these are very painful. So that's because you have your sensory nerve endings in the first two top layers of skin. So once you extend down into that layer, it's going to be very painful. Your skin will, might blister, you'll have redness to the site, be very sore, your skin might have, look pink, red, or have white patches in it, depending on what type of burn you have. And it, again, it'll be very sore, maybe a little bit of bleeding as well. With a third degree burn, you will have no pain. So if you ever have come across a person who has a burn with zero pain, that is not a good sign because that means we've burnt through the top layer, the first layer, we've gone through the second layer, and now we're in the third layer. So those nerve endings have been burnt away completely, so you're not feeling any pain. One of the functions of the skin is to help control our moisture. So it keeps moisture in, keeps bacteria out, helps protect us. When the skin is not intact, when it's been broken, then it can't do its job as well. So if you have a burn that goes all the way down to this bottom layer, it's really easy for bacteria to get in and cause infection, and it's really easy for water to get out and for um, your body to go into shock if you have a large burn. 
So the best thing we want to do is to prevent these types of burns. So for heat burns, things like touching the stove, um, having a hand in the fire, anything like that, you want to uh, cool the area to prevent the burn from going any further and to stop that burning process. And then you want to cover it with a lint-free dressing. So first degree, second degree burns, um, you can probably treat these by yourself. Any sort of um, serious second degree or third degree burns, you should seek medical care um, in a hospital or clinic. But the biggest thing is you want to stop the burning. So with heat burns, let's say you remove that heat source, you cool the skin, you cover it to prevent infection. With radiation burns like sunburns, again, remove the heat source, get into the shade, cool the skin with water, um, cool washcloths, apply any ointment, um, like sunburn ointment afterwards, and make sure that you um, prevent any further burning. If you have blisters forming, you of course want to make sure they stay intact, because if they pop, then again, that's another opening for bacteria to get into your body and cause infection. So the biggest thing is to cool the skin, to keep prevent further burning, to keep a nice lint-free dressing on over top to prevent infection, and to seek medical care for serious burns. So other than cuts, scrapes, and abrasions to the skin, we can also do damage to our skin by burning it. So there's a couple of different different types of burns you can experience. So there's heat burns, um, like when you talk to touch a hot stove, there's radiation burns, like when you've been in the sun too long, and there's chemical burns, like again, you've been exposed to different chemicals that are um, caustic to your skin. So for this video we're only going to talk about heat burns and radiation burns.